Welcome back to the workshop. So those of you who watched the last video will know we had a lot of fun trying to get this nice and flat and true and level and sitting so it didn't wobble on top of the knee. So we finally got that sorted out. We got it nice and level now, it's installed. So the next thing to do is to take it apart. First thing to do is just take the gib out or we'll allow it to slide and then we'll take the main table off. should just slide nicely. Okay, now we're left with the y-axis, so we'll just loosen these off. And do the same thing again. Gib's not great, it looks like just cold rolled steel and then they've just left it to rust. It is reasonably flat, not sure whether I, I want to replace that with something a bit better. Anyway, we're not going to do it yet. Okay, so now we take the waxes off. Okay, so what we're trying to do next is this ball screw is going to go in here and the ball nut will be in here and then this little uh, carrier which connects it or the connection bracket that goes between that and the y-axis that'll sit in here and it'll move backwards and forwards now although I'm intending to have some kind of plates on here they may concertina or some bellows or something like that chances are I'm going to get some swarf and bits and pieces down here so the idea is there's a hole in the knee so about 20 25 mil I think it is in the middle and um, we'll drill a hole in here to match that and then as this moves backwards and forwards if there's any large pieces it should push them down the hole rather than accumulate in here and start to go into the ball nut. So, you know, it's kind of cheap insurance, really. It's, there's no real downside to doing it. Uh, so let's, um, let's get this moved up, lined up, and we'll drill that hole. Okay, so I'll start off with a centre drill. Just to move it up a bit. With the step drill. Oh no, we can't get the drill bit in. What are we going to do now? Good. Let's 
get this out. Okay, so hopefully that'll sweep some chips down that hole at least and they can fall out underneath, under here. Right, next job. Okay, so next is the ball screw because we need to get, need to get the ball screw in there and then this block. We need to get this drilled and tapped to suit this uh, hole pattern on the front here. So, uh, yeah, and I think I haven't got space to put the full grease nipple on there so I'll probably have to grease it fully before it goes in and then just put a sort of a, a blocking piece in there, a grub screw or something like that. Uh, just isn't going to be space so to maintain it I'm going to have to sort of strip it down but it's not really doing huge amounts of service so hopefully that's okay. So we've got a ball screw in there. So there's our bearings inside there and then quite a while ago now I turned up this little spacer piece on the lathe that goes on next. And then there's our handle. Now I haven't done the um, little keyway yet. Just to make sure it's all going to work and uh, work out sort of where the handle ends up and then where we need to put the keyway. Okay, that's good enough. on next. Now I'll just go and get the y-axis and put that on and make sure that's going to line up and then that will kind of dictate where these holes need to be here. Good news is it clears. Let's get the... actually what I should have done is screw that adapter to the bonnet first. Yeah, I need to make this, don't I? Right, back in a minute. Ah, right, let's try that again. What we'll do, we'll wind this in because uh, when the ball nut's closest to this end, that's when you're going to get the most accurate position for that. Some about there. There's one. It's time to see if it's all going to work. Hopefully it will, I forgot my measurements right. So we need these to pull this up reasonably tight but not too tight because we need to allow it to kind of self-centre that way on the uh, on the front face. So it's got to be reasonably tight this way to get this little height position correct but allow it to move that way a little bit. So let's get those so they're just touching. front and get that aligned. So I've just tightened up the gib so this is in about, in about the right place as well. Those are loose so we know it's pulled up tight that way so now we just need to get it correctly centered so this is flat against that face. Let's get our bearing lock on. Okay it needs to go back a bit. So what we'll do, we'll get everything on and then we, we'll push it back and then that will find its own position. So we need the uh, spacers next that I turned on the lathe uh, quite a while ago actually, before I did the Ethernet upgrade. And then there's our handle. Actually what you'll see is, um, I've made it so there's the spacer there and the spacer bears on that inner face there. And then this is just um, just a sort of cover that goes over the top. This doesn't actually touch on anything, so the load path is through there onto that face. Sorry, that face there. And then the nut goes on this side. There we are. Let's put the 
nuts on so the handle doesn't fall off. Oh, that's going to be fun to do up, isn't it? Because I can't stop it turning. Oh, maybe there, there we go. All right, looks pretty good. Uh, looks like we've got a bit more to go on these. So that's good, and then I think we just wind this, there we go. Somewhere there. About there's where it wants to be. Just loosen these just in case. Alright, I think that's it, so we'll mark those. Okay, so I've just leveled this up by eye, so it looks like it's parallel to that. Doesn't really matter, but just look a bit better if it's level. And then we'll use, I'm sure you've seen these before, but these are transfer punches, so they're just sort of round cylinders of various sizes. These ones start at one millimeter and go all the way up to 13 in half millimeter steps. And as you can see, they've just got a little uh, point on the top. So we're going to use this one which is five and a half millimeters. Now I've already blued up the surface just behind here just so it will leave a bit, a bit of a better mark. Okay. And what I think I'm going to do is we'll tap or we'll punch this just this one here, uh, wind it to the other end, uh, wind this uh, carriage to the other end and just make sure that looks about right. Then we'll take this apart, drill and tap it and get a bolt in there and then that will hold that nice and firmly and then I can come back and set it up again and do the other three rather than tap it and risk it moving and so on. It's only going to get one go at this really. Looks good. Yeah, I think I moved it, taking it out. Right. Let's wind it to the other end. Now when I ordered this uh, ball screw, I made sure that it was almost a complete fit inside there, just so that you couldn't wind it off the end, so that would be a bit of a disaster. Somewhere. Somewhere around there. Oh, still going. Okay, I've bottomed out on that bit there. Let's see there. Okay. I'll just have a look down here and just see if that's stood in about the right place. Now it's a bit dark to look all the way down there with the camera and I can barely see it myself, but it is pretty much in line so you can see the little witness mark just there from the previous hole. And what we can do is just feel that which is about yeah I can feel it's gone into the little hole there and this looks level and fine so let's drill and thread that get a bolt in and then we can take it from there Take it out to tapping size, which is for an M5 is 4.2, and then to tap it, I'm just going to use this little tap guide, it goes on the end, that just try and keep it square to the work. Three. 
three. So I've just put the ball screw back in again. And this one screws a little bit long, but it should be okay for now. Feels okay there. All right. We'll mark up the other three holes, drill and tap those in the same way, and then when we're done, we'll bring you back. Okay, I've drilled and tapped all the holes now and we've got everything set up again, so let's see if it goes together. I'll just get this one started. And then you get the other ones in. Looks nice and level. Yeah, pleased with that. Right, let's get the handle on and uh, see if it works. Spacer, handle. Uh, obviously, we haven't got the keyway, so this may or may not grip on here. Okay, hopefully that, that's tight enough. Get the handle. It still might slip, I don't know, but let's see. Oh, yes, it does. Definitely need that key weight. So, what we'll do is loosen the gear a little bit. Okay, let's give that a try. Uh, I can't really get this very tight, and there's no key weight, so I'm probably just going to have to turn the nut actually. stop on there just so it doesn't rub against that somewhere there that felt nice and linear there are no tight spots in particular okay so I'm gonna mark this up we'll strip it down and then we'll get it on the CNC machine and I can machine out the keyway Typical now, I can't get it undone. <laughs> First it wouldn't tighten up, now it won't. Okay, I'm just taking a couple of minutes just to dial the vice in using the dial test indicator running across the back there. So that's nice and level. And then we've got an ER32 collet holder there. And then we've got um, it's a 16 millimeter collet there holding onto the ball screw. And then this is the plain shank at the other end. And then we've just got it all strapped down and uh, nice and rigid, or as rigid as we can make it. So in here we've got a 3mm end mill. Now we're going to cut a 4mm keyway, but I decided to go with a 3mm and then I can creep up on the size and get it get the fit just right. I could have gone in with a 4mm end mill, but it's got a little bit of run out on the collet, so it's likely to cut ever so slightly oversized. So using the 3mm I can get the fit just as I want it. So I've just touched off both sides and off the end and I know uh, how far I want the slot to go from the front here and how deep I want it to go. So let's get on with it. Should be a nice gentle fit in it. Okay, I'll go with that. 
Nice, right. Let's get it out of there and then we can reassemble the handle. Okay, we're ready for a reassembly. So I've just put a little bit of grease in here, put a grease nipple on, and um, cause that might be the last time I get in here. Well, for a while anyway. So get that in, and then the bearing housing. Get the screws in that hold that on. Nope. Yep. Amazing when you build things like this, just how many times you end up taking them apart again. Put it together, get the next stage assessed, mark it up, do whatever, then take it apart, machine something, repeat. When you finish, you think, oh, how's it taking me so long? It's because you've rebuilt it about 10 times. All right, those are pretty close now. We'll get the these ones in now. That's good, just tighten these again now. Just in case. That's okay. Didn't move. Spacer and the key, does that fit? Just about. Hand wheel. And the locking nut. Now this time I should be able to hold the handle against the nut. Here we go. That does feel good. No bent lead screws. Nice and smooth. You should probably benefit from a bit of oil. Well, there we go. 
very pleased. Okay, that about wraps it up there. I'm pretty pleased with the progress so far. I'm really glad I went with these left hand ball screws. It's nice and smooth, really easy to turn. Doesn't have that kind of lumpy quality to it like those bent lead screws. Yeah, it works really well. So, uh, onwards. So in the next video, we need to have a look at the Y-axis on here. Um, I've already made the little ball nut holder here, but the ball nut itself has got to be ground down on both sides. It's just going to be a little bit interesting, but you know, nothing too complicated. It's just steps to go through. And then I've got to machine a custom end plate on the end here for the bearing holder. And then we can get that moving as well in here. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and see you next time.